few others. And it's my pleasure with both Valencia and Elm to be judging these rounds for you all today. But without further ado, we shall be getting, or we'll get started right now. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and everything in between. I'd like to thank you all for coming to our new round of the CC and Politics Debate Tournament. I am your host for this evening, Czar, and joining me tonight are Elmdale and Valenci. Our three judges will be debate or will be officiating this bout between Galaxy Milk and a wizard. Galaxy Milk. The current resolution as it stands is, and I quote, let me make sure I've got it written here. The resolution is, the international community's intervention in Syria is justified. <laughs> if I remember correctly, the debaters both know their positions. Yes. They know where they are to be debating from at this point. So, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to ask that our debaters both introduce themselves. Galaxy, since you are the visitor to this server, I will allow you to go first. Hello, can you hear me all right? Yes. Yeah, uh, I'm Goose. Uh, nice to see you all. Thank you for having me. Um, not really sure what you want me to introduce myself as, um, but I'm here and I'm excited and uh, hopefully I win. That's about all I can say in it. All right, fair enough. Wizard? Hello, I am a wizard. I am here to argue the affirmative of the uh, resolution that the international community's uh, intervention in Syria uh, is was justified. I'm assuming we mean the American side, since you know there were a lot of international interventions that you know. It can be assumed, or that's up to the AF to determine. So the AF gets to set the table for debates traditionally. So that's up to okay. you. All. Yeah, that's up to you on that one, wizard. That's so, that's what I choose. Um, Perfect. And I'm and, and I'm a wizard. Well, ladies and gentlemen, the stage is set. Our combatants are here, and we are a little less than sixty seconds away from getting started. We're just letting this uh, the seats fill up a little bit more, and I am happy to have you all here to watch a good bout. I am expecting nothing less but some rip roaring kumite and some great flagrant arguments. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, uh, I will be... Actually, do we have the ability to stream in here? We do not. Really? So, one, uh, I don't know how to use stage rooms particularly well. So here's what we'll be doing. Uh, lock online. Uh, for the actual... Oh, give me one moment. Valencia, would you like to hold time or would you like me to? I do can so? I can hold time. Yes, for you. Yes, since you're hosting, I right. will host hold time for sure. Uh, should I Perfect. count uh, like fifteen five seconds? Uh, yeah, so five minutes. Five... But... Mm -hmm. yeah. Go ahead. So here's how we're going to do it for timings on this debate. But as both of you heard, you have five minute intros and five minute closing statements. All rebuttals afterwards are four minutes in between. You each will have three responses to each other. Now, alongside that, you guys will be told when you have one minute with a one minute remar uh, reminder and a 30 second reminder. Just so you both understand that. Um, Understood. Can you stream the timer? Unfortunately, I don't believe we can. Spectre, do you know if that's possible? I'm looking through the settings now. I can't find anything like that. Anyone from CC familiar with stages and. Found a way to do uh, we, that because... we, we, it doesn't work in our server yet, so no. Yeah, yeah, I guess it's not available then. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, I can, if you guys like are interested, uh, you can have my stream. Uh, oh no, I mean there is a delay, so no, it would work actually. Never mind. Cool. But yeah, I will be, I will be counting like uh, a minute uh, at the start uh, and the conclusions uh, before it ends, and thirty seconds before it ends. Okay. Yep. How, how, how does that sound? And uh, back and forth. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Um, oh, by the way, one second. I, I do want to clarify something. The debate is about, inter while uh, a wizard is on his right since he is in the affirmative to like focus on America's, uh, 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 America's intervention, the debate is international um, intervention, just to be sure. And yes, yeah, yeah go ahead. So... 
without further ado, everyone, I'd like to th graciously thank all of you for coming and enjoying this debate for us. I only hope nothing but the best for our debaters, and we shall begin. Um, quick thing before we go any further, actually, because this is going to make things easier for both of our uh, combatants, we're going to give our, I guess, our grading criteria. What this normally is done in parliamentary Ooh. debates is a bit Thank of a common you, courtesy everyone. that judges Follow give me. to their debaters so for they know what we're looking for. Um, I'll start with myself. That way it makes it easier for our fellow judges to make or to make sure and everybody else can get a good understanding. Um, I'm an old-fashioned parliamentary judge, so that means I enjoy clash. I prefer it when you duke it out with your opponents rather than just talking over them and making just pleasantries or points that aren't necessarily uh, substantiated and they're there to be vacuous and morally grandstandy. I prefer a nice, good, clean debate, very much like a boxing match. And that's the way I judge. Valencia? Uh Yeah. Oh, one second. Uh, one second. I'm sorry. I'm just adjusting. Uh, can you guys hear me? Perfect. Yes. Okay. So uh, I, uh, same thing with Cesar. I, there is uh, my bias mostly relies on anecdotes. I am not a fan of them. Uh, I know sometimes they can be valid, but uh, when I uh, like my bias would be whenever I hear them, it's just like a bit peeve for me. So just like to, to to throw it out there, yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. My my thing is practicality. If you uh, create like practical arguments that uh, could be used or applied in the real world, I will be probably more lenient to your side. Uh, I was told that I wasn't too good with um uh, with theory arguments last time so hopefully i'll also since everyone else is also a practical judge i will bring more defense of the of the theory side here perfect with everyone's uh biases and predilections in mind we will open up the floor wizard you have the floor for five minutes starting from when you begin thank you uh so the reason i think the uh uh, intervention in Syria was justified is two reasons, and I'm going to divide the first reason into three reasons. Here we go. So um, the first reason, the overall umbrella that I'm putting this under is uh, kind of international stability. And um, the, uh, uh, we, the, the idea that we want uh, liberal democracies to spread in the sort of like, you know, post-World War II uh, view of the, you know, United States and the Western world's uh, uh, role in the world. Um, so uh, let me divide that up. So, uh, so intervention, uh, I think it, like it helped or could have helped, or at least I'm, I, I'm taking this from the standpoint of like, if I am looking at, should I uh, invade Syria? I don't want to look at this like in hindsight, like what happened. I want to look at the reasons why intervention was a good idea and kind of put to the side exactly uh, what the result of that was. I think that's kind of, that's, I guess we could, but that's a little weedy, but uh, so if I'm choosing, if if I'm sitting here and I'm choosing, like, should I intervene in Syria? One, it's going to help diminish uh, Iran's influence in the Arab world. So um, they they uh, were aiding Syria at the time, um, and they sent like soldiers to assist Assad. Um, so uh, and you know, uh, Iran is obviously a major supporter of Hezbollah and uh, and uh, you know militants in Lebanon. This uh, also, I would want to intervene in Syria because it's going to help that conflict from spreading. At the time, there were, you know, these were uh, uh, in the uh, aftermath of the Arab Spring, and this was, you know, certainly the most uh, violent of those types of uprisings. I need to get chat out of my eyeballs. Thank you. <laughs> your, your means are horrible. Um, so, uh, uh, so, yeah. The civil war had already exacerbated certain like sectarian strife in uh, Lebanon and Iraq, um, and uh, the Turkish government, like you know, accused uh, Assad of you know supporting Kurdish militants. Basically, like we we don't want more conflict in the area. Um, uh, uh, I'm reading things I wrote. Um, so this would help create a bulwark against uh, extremist groups like. Uh, you know, Al Qaeda. Uh, we don't want them, uh, pr you know, spreading their shit around the Middle East either. Uh, especially considering that at the time, uh, Iraq was still uh, even even less stable 
um, this is around like 2012, 2013, um, you wouldn't want uh, that happening um, because, you know, that puts American soldiers' lives in danger. Uh, I'm going to add another one here, actually, off the top of my head. Uh, the people who are, uh, who, or the countries who were, um, uh, you know, sup or, or vetoing uh, support for the pro-democracy uh, rebel forces were, you know, uh, it, this is uh, China and Russia, uh, countries who would like to see themselves get a stronger international foothold who do not give one little bit of a shit about a constitution. Um, countries like that getting a foothold in uh, 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 resource-rich areas like Syria, uh, especially Russia, which is, you know, their entire economy is basically uh, based on oil. Um, that's bad news. You don't want them getting uh, a major foothold internationally um, if you are for self-determined uh, democratic societies. And the uh, and that's the first umbrella. Second umbrella is a lot shorter. Uh, there is an enormous human rights disaster that was going minute. on. Thank you. An enormous human rights disaster uh, uh, proliferated by Assad at the time, you know, gassing his own people, torturing, disappearing people, uh, opening fire on protesters for just like putting up graffiti, um, uh, really uh, uh, terrible, terrible shit. Um, now, what exactly we could do or what we should have done um, we can get into the weeds on that because I'm sure uh, you all have questions. I will yield the rest of my time. Thank you, Wizard. I greatly appreciate that. That was a very well-made opening statement. Uh, Goose, you have the floor for five minutes, starting from when you speak. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. I think, first of all, since my opponent uh, did not take the opportunity to set up uh, our boundaries for the discussion, I'll go ahead. First of all, I'd say, say that we will be focusing uh, justification, the idea of justification, from the perspective of Syria in this situation, not the perspective of the international agents who would be getting involved. Uh, in that sense, I'd like to reject the idea that we're only considering the U.S.'s interventions, as my opponent has already talked about the role of uh, agents such as Russia in this situation, we will uh, be uh, considering all international interventions as a whole because it adds to the nuance of the situation. When we talk about, we should think about it uh, justification-wise from the perspective of Syria, there's a good reason for this. Uh, because there's a massive contrast clearly between the potential consequences for the two groups involved. And we'll split those two groups uh, between Syria and the international agents involved, which would be the US, the UK, Russia, Iran. The consequences for Syria are much larger potentially than the potential consequences for those places like the US and Russia if they were to get involved in the, in the conflict. For places like the US, the UK, uh, those are marginal gains potentially of political or military strength which basically limits the potential effects negatively to a smaller group of individuals. That would be the uh, politicians involved and their, uh, their uh, reputations, and it would be the individuals in the army who are fighting. Um, so a smaller group of individuals directly affected. Um, and then uh, there's also the possibility that the conflict itself is inc inconsequential in the long term to places like the US and the UK. Uh, whether you get involved with a conflict in another place uh, for gains on the international stage, politically, uh, militarily. Uh, in this situation, when we're thinking about justifications and reasons to get into the conflict, whether they did or didn't would not uh, potentially have had long-lasting effect if other conflicts came into play. Uh, whoever lost in that situation wouldn't have made a massive difference to the US and the UK. There's also the idea that uh, them getting involved in this conflict would not take away rights from individuals as it would do in Syria. When the US or the UK, I'm just using those two examples because it's easiest to rattle off my head, there's obviously many more agents involved there. When they get in conflict in another country, it does not take away the rights of the individuals in the US and the UK to vote. It doesn't take away their political power over their own country and, and their decisions. Whereas in this area, there's much larger potential effects, there's vulnerability on multiple levels, right? First of all, there's the international scale for Syria. They're already uh, in a vulnerable position. They're in the Middle East, which, as my opponent mentioned, just passed uh, Arab Spring. 
uh, it's going to affect their relationships with their neighboring countries, first of all. Um, but then also the rest of the world substantially. If the international communities are getting involved in Syria and Syria is then home to this battle and, and this political uh, event, suddenly them coming out of this conflict, them being able to forge ties with other countries who they ally with greatly affected because of the massive uh, intricacies of international relations. Suddenly they're being plunged into international relations that they aren't in control of. That would affect them long term when they're trying to set up a better society for themselves when it comes to trade, especially, for example, and military alliances in the area of the world where they may not have uh, sufficient resources themselves, uh, maybe reliant on their neighbors. It's very uh, vulnerable for Syria uh, when it comes, it comes to the uh, consequences of this fight. So when thinking of justifications, and whether we should intervene, that is very important to realize. And then there's the internal national you issues have a minute. going on. Go ahead. Uh, the social and religious ones, uh, issues of religious power structures, um, it, where the potential impact of the international communities getting involved is messing up the structure of the war itself, going from trying to liberate people to issues between uh, religious sects, which people had brought up before the decision was made. So it counted into justification there. And then finally, the individual effects, as previously mentioned, death, access to aid, violence, these things affect people's lives directly. There's also a loss of political power when other places, international communities, take away the choice from individuals. There's also the idea that these effects mount over time on individuals. So if you think about justification, my point here is we have to take it from the idea of Syria, because Syria, that stakeholder, is the one that's most greatly affected by the consequences here when we're making this decision. After that, the idea is that the potential effects on Syria uh, will place at the bottom of the priority here. Uh, Can I finish my sentence? No, at time. No. Go ahead. Okay. Go ahead, Cesar. All right. Wizard, you have four minutes to respond. Um, I am also looking at this from the perspective of Syria. So, um, it, like, e the economic um, uh, situation Syria was mentioned, but the economic situation under Assad, uh, like he came, uh, like he came into power, um, uh, perceived as like a kind of a reformer, um, and uh, he and that you know quickly went away. He went right back to his father's authoritarian tactics, but economically, um, he did kind of oversee a liberalization of the economy in Syria. But part of the reason that there was so much, you know, uh, unrest and instability in Syria is that this liberalization only seemed to uh, benefit well-connected um, oligarchs or, you know, well-connected, the, 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 <laughs> the people you would expect. Um, there were you know, like it after there were droughts uh, in Syria between uh, 07 and 10, um, you know, they, they, where they uh, kind of moved into more urban centers, there weren't help for people. Like they, they, their economic situation sucked. Um, the whole uh, point of intervening is to allow the Syrian people to be self-determined. Uh, these are pro-democracy forces that we're trying to support. Um, uh, so that they can choose their own government and presumably not one that is uh, authoritarian that uh, tortures and gasses its own citizens. Um, so I, uh, and the, the reason I didn't get into uh, like Russia's, just based on what the resolution is, uh, what Russia's, uh, uh, whether their response is justified, because then I would be like, because their response, their in that international community's response to the Syrian conflict is directly opposed to another one. So it would be kind of hard for me to say that this is justified, uh, or or that they are both justified when I when, you know, one of them from the point of view, uh, from my point of view is wrong. It'd be like saying that you know, both pro-choice and pro-life people are correct. Um, so uh, I don't have. Uh, oh, and in terms of the international community, there was mentioned that, um, you know, this doesn't affect an American's right to vote, uh, this, that, and the other thing. Correct. However, uh, you need to have uh, leverage internationally for, like, with pro-democracy forces in order to affect many, 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 many aspects of your life um, and the freedom of many, 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 many people abroad. Uh, the United States' ability to leverage its power economically, uh, you know, having... Uh, 
like for example, you want the American dollar to be the uh, currency that we trade oil with. You want that to be the thing you can buy oil with all over the world because that makes your American dollar, um, you know, more powerful. It has more buying power, and you 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 want that. That's just one example of like a, a way that uh, having a good international standing, other than human rights, um, uh, uh, does affect your life. And if you had like you want to prevent the proliferation of authoritarian powers precisely because, um, you know, that it's it's not it, it, for Syrians, for people worldwide. Um, uh, I don't think I have enough time to get into like uh, China's kind of authoritarianism creeping its way uh, via corporate America into the American life. In terms seconds. of Yeah, because I only have 30 seconds. But um, I think it's clear that this is important for both the perspective of Syrian people and anyone who, uh, and anyone in the Western nations who were intervening, particularly the United States. I yield the rest of my 10 seconds. All right. Just to give a little bit of, I guess, uh, just to nip something in the ass before it becomes an issue, please keep in mind, everyone, that the AF does get to choose the forum. The neg, you do have the opportunity to say whether or not that forum choice is considered abusive, but you don't get the ability to actually change the forum if the app already set one. So, Goose, you have four minutes to start, or four minutes to speak, from the moment that you begin speaking. Okay. Uh, well, I'd say that one wasn't established before, but we've both agreed on the one that I did establish, so I, I'm assuming that isn't an issue right now. There's a couple of things that I wanted to mention just before I get into my points, is that so far the ideas about preventing spread of uh, terrorism uh, and preventing spread of authoritarianism, it hasn't been described actually how the international interventions created that effect, or how they would create that effect. Uh, it seems actually what we need to be focusing on is the intentions behind the actions when we're considering the justification of them. And the intention of that isn't necessarily to prevent the spread of those. It could be that on the surface, but as my opponent showed, it's difficult to explain exactly how the interventions that were planned would actually create this effect. Uh, and this brings it down to why I said we need to focus on every international actor, right? Uh, it's because, unfortunately, it is about the conflict between the two. What this comes down to, what the situation can somehow boil down to, is the fact that it is uh, a U.S. versus Russia situation, where the situation of the Syrians, uh, the main stakeholder here, as I've described, is not put at the front of priority list. Um, it's about gaining political power, not over the area. Uh, and one of the ways we can explore for example, is the change in global uh, military norms that would have come about from this situation. One of the potential aims of the situation is argued a lot whether the interventions were legal, right? Uh, this is, uh, there's a conflict uh, uh, in international responses overall and why people acted, whether legal or not, is not sure. But one of the actual effects that we can be sure would have happened here from them insisting that they intervene internationally in the affairs of Syria is that would be the legal lines preventing military intervention uh, from these more powerful states in the future. Uh, the benefits here of doing so would be to the West and to Russia, as they would then have the ability to intervene and take control of the situations that are politically beneficial to them rather than trying to benefit the people involved, such as Syria. Um, it's not justified in that sense because benefiting international communities more than benefiting Syrians struggling uh, is ignoring our stakeholders here. It also encourages the focus on military-based counterterrorism, uh, the use of military force, which uh, it's arguable Syria may have benefited much more from other types of support things like better aid. And it's often said that there was a lack of communication and diplomacy at the start of the situation. Uh, the international uh, decisions involved arguably therefore could have made the situation worse and fueled bloodshed. From this, the international actors were considering the possibility. Uh, it's shown articles at the time that they knew that this was a possibility, the increase in bloodshed not actually helping the Syrians. They chose to disregard that point. Therefore, it's unjustified in terms of serious consequences to intervene internationally. 
there's also this idea that you can bring up that this political change or potential political change overall, this game and power to uh, the actors involved would be exclusively beneficial to the international community, excluding Syria. That would be like the US and, and, and Russia, gaining this ability to intervene militarily in a wider range of situations. This is especially due to the potential damage to Syria when sidelining the actual situation Syrians needed help with, potentially, because you can gain uh, benefit from those uh, larger seconds. changes. If you are destroyed as a country, destroyed socially, economically, politically, which would have been the case, as we know, from the increase in uh, uh, conflict in the area when international communities intervene. Therefore, the idea isn't that we're helping Syria here in the short term or the long term, which makes it unjustified. Um, I think I'm done there. Mm -hmm. Word. What, what's the format? Do I go now? Or are we in questions? Yes. Or? Okay. No, you, you go next. You Sweet. Have four minutes to speak. Thank you. Um, so just to be clear, when we're talking about intervention, uh, this was first, it was just like trucks and, and aid. Um, then it, it was arms sales and uh, uh, intelligence. Um, there was uh, like half a mil spent. Um, uh, hold on, let me get my notes. Yeah, in 2015, they spent half a million or half a billion, excuse me, um, on a kind of failed program. Uh, then there was a billion dollar covert program um, that was successful, but uh, was decimated by rushing bomb. And the actual the first time there was uh, U.S. Uh, uh, military intervention in Syria wasn't until April 2017. Um, there was a missile strike on the Shirat Air Base. Um, so. Uh, we, in the type of intervention, uh, intervention I'm talking about, and I'm like, again, putting us back into like circa 2012, we're talking about, um, you know, international aid and not like putting, uh, boots on the ground necessarily. Um, but I still think that that, that would be justified. I mean, let's, we can, we seem to be glossing over, like when we're talking about what is good for the Syrian people, uh, the Syrian people were getting gassed, disappeared murdered for for just uh you know like addressing grievances against assad i i don't see how they wouldn't benefit from having that type of regime uh overtaken either through um you know soft means like you know aid intelligence arms sales uh or um uh or or direct means uh via military strikes i yield the rest of my time okay all right, this is final response from you, Goose. This is your third chance to go up. Okay, uh, one of the interventions uh, ignored that uh, was the training of soldiers. Uh, however, yeah, we, we also mentioned the, uh, that was selling, the half of, bill. selling of arms, yeah. Um, unfortunately, again, there's the issue here of how does that actually lead to a regime being taken down? How does that lead to the prevention of spread of violence and uh, against the people? The violence against people was already there. We know that those... Uh, groups that we were aiding on the international uh, scale, those groups that we were supporting with these deals, they were already using violence against civilians. How would giving them more means to create violence prevent violence, right? There's an idea that you're going with here is that violence does not create more violence. And, and as far as I've seen, we haven't been able to explain how that is not the case. I'd like to go on here then to talk about humanitarian aid and the issues uh, with that support given. When you want to give humanitarian aid, that's fantastic. However, we know that humanitarian aid is often disrupted and limited to certain groups when you increase uh, conflict and polarization in a region, which was certainly arguably one of the effects of military intervention, things like training soldiers and giving them weapons. Uh, it meant that only certain people could get access to their aid. It's arguable that a better intervention would have been those non-military types. However, because of the other things going on, because of that international conflict, because of those ulterior motives, that decision was not taken into account. Again, it's the idea that the Syrians were not oh, put shit. first in this situation, right? Uh, if intervention, um, they, there would therefore be like a lower risk to human, like a low risk of harm to Syrian people if we weren't taking military uh, actions here, partly, be a less uh, touching of vulnerable aspects 
uh, of Syria at the time, such as the religious tensions and the growing resorts to violence, right? When we're providing more uh, access to violence and encouraging violence in, in some vague way to end violence, it's not really making the situation better and the idea is that we can't assume that would have happened because we are talking about the decision making process the idea is that they knew that was a possibility and they knew that was a strong possibility from past events from past wars and they ignored that which means that the decision was not justified when we're talking about the syrian people the syrian stakeholders um i could also go into the point here that the uh again like um there's this moral argument as well that violence is never justified itself by involving the international uh authorities by involving new power new military uh, power and skills it seems inevitable that violence would increase as previously said or the damage uh, the potential damage caused by that violence could increase because you have access to better weapons and better training already we knew that civilians again would be targeted and we knew that was a possibility that the violence would increase, so therefore you could say it is not a moral decision to increase violence, especially when it's not certain that the outcome of that violence would be the resolving of the situation going on. You haven't been able to explain how giving these things to people, how the consider would be able to resolve the situation. One thing that was pointed out, though, however, however as I previously mentioned, was a lack of... Uh, a lack of discussion, a lack of diplomacy, which isn't necessarily just fixed by being violent, you could argue. Uh, it seems to me, at least, that the response on the international, international communities to Syria was about their own benefit, rather than actually dealing with the issues at hand. Am I done? Is my time over? Uh, okay, you have eight seconds, go ahead. Um, well, I can't really do much. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Uh, Cesar? Yes. All right. Sorry about that. I was just finishing up writing something in my flow. Uh, Wizard, this is your final rebuttal before we go into closing statements. You have the floor. Right. Um, the... Uh, so, again, we are looking at this from the perspective of, of the Syrian people. Um, like the the reason uh, the, the way this would make their life better uh, is presumably uh, well you know we'd be getting a you'd be getting rid of a uh, torturing chemical weapons using authoritarian regime uh, that like centered its economy around just a few people um, and uh, left people out to dry economically uh, with you know uh, uh, human rights wise. Um, that now, yes, that does mean that more violence is going to indeed take place when you are intervening in a civil war. Sure. I guess the alternative is just to let one side just stomp on the other forever. Um, but, uh, if you want democracy in the Middle East and you want, uh, people to be less oppressed, then we need to talk about what type of violence is going on here. I'm not saying like... Oh well, you, you know, if if there's two sides in a war and you're supporting the one that's trying to overtake the authoritarian regime, um, uh, uh, yeah, th that means there's going to be a war and that means there's going to be violence. But what is the goal of that violence? The goal of one side of that violence is to uh, establish a regime that is, you know, torturing and uh, murdering and gassing its own citizens, and the other one is to make them self-determined. Um, at the very least, I'm not arguing that they would be perfect. Uh, they don't have to be for my argument to make sense. Just that they, it would be greatly, greatly preferable to uh, to having Assad uh, as the uh, you know as the leader of that of that country, considering all of his human rights abuses. Um, we got into uh, Goose got into intention a little bit. I mean. I'm not. I, I I'm sympathetic to that point. I'm pretty sure that there were probably people who wanted to get into Syria for oil. But the point is, what is the result of it? Is it you know? Is it justified? Um, it would make the Syrians' lives better. Um, it it, uh, it would put them uh, in a, a better standing economically. It would uh, help halt the uh, 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 prevent 
uh, authoritarian, strong authoritarian regimes outside Syria from getting a more, uh, having access to more resources and getting a uh, stronger uh, foothold leverage wise internationally, which again, you do not want. Um, uh, this, it, it certainly was justified. Um, and uh, for both the Syrian people, the international community, uh, the Middle East, and um, the United States, perhaps in particular. But more, but most of all, the Syrian people. You can't see me right now, but I'm bowing a little bit. I yield the rest of my time. All right, perfect. So we will now be going to closing, or both debaters have both had three opportunities to give their rebuttals. I remember correctly, yes. So uh, yes, we'll be going minutes. to closing. Yep. So Goose as the neg. Actually, no. I'm sorry. Wizard as the af. You, you do get to go first for closing statements, because it is an af block. Sure. Um... So you have five minutes to speak. Traditionally, for both of you, just so you guys have a good understanding of how these things work. Closing statements, traditionally speaking, have to encapsulate what your arguments for are for and what you want us to be grading on. So, for instance, if you think there's a point in your argument that you want us to really, really look at and uses like the linchpin to looking at your argument in its totality, this is where you need to establish it for both of you. Okay, great. Right. You have five minutes from when you start speaking. Okay, great. So... Uh... You can break down uh, if like the, the crux of my argument is weigh what you do want versus what you don't want. You do want uh, to diminish Iran, Russia, and China's influence internationally. Um, I, the, the, it's a long discussion about uh, it, it, you know exactly why you want that, but I think anyone in the audience and the judges kind of understand exactly why that is. These are anti-democratic authoritarian forces. Um, you don't want people. Uh, you know, uh, getting gassed, being tortured, being disappeared for simple grievances against their government. Um, that is what you have if you, that is what you are guaranteed to have. Even like Goose made the point, like there's no guarantee that, you know, th that the Assad regime will go away and everything will turn out hunky-dory uh, if we intervene. But we are definitely guaranteed to have that uh that kind of behavior proliferate and continue if we don't intervene or the international community does not intervene at all. Um, uh, you don't want conflicts like that f uh, to spread. Um, the uh, This does start to affect the international community. I completely space saying this. Uh, you don't want refugee crises, um, like intervening in Syria and uh, uh, doing something to solve this quickly, even if it is violent, uh, unfortunately. Uh, does would uh you know prevent the uh you know mass exodus of syrians to europe in the united states um uh uh let's see and uh fi and let you 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 do want um uh, uh pro you, you do want liberal democracies uh uh, uh self-governed countries um in the middle east and worldwide um, this is to me just uh, a, a uh, just a base kind of kind of straightforward moral claim about the types of societies we want uh, worldwide. We want people to have more power over their own lives, um, at, like individually and as a collective. Um, uh, so, uh, uh, for these reasons and. Uh, for so for international reasons, the way it affects the international community, the way it affects um, uh, what authority, what regimes have, um, what access to resources they have, uh, uh, what what foothold pro democracy or authoritarian forces have internationally, um, what uh, how the Syrian people are treated by their own government, um, and the uh, how and how this affects uh, citizens in, in, in other countries through, um, you know, refugee crises. For these reasons, we should definitely uh, intervene in Syria. It is justified. And, Thank uh, you, Wizard. Uh, yeah, that's it. <laughs> Thank you, Wizard. That was very well, or very well made. Goose, you have five minutes to make your closing arguments. Show us exactly why we should be voting neg. 
You have five minutes from when you begin to speak. All right. Uh, well, we both agree we should be thinking about what we want uh, against what we don't want. Uh, what my opponent has not been able to establish is how uh, the international community's decisions here would actually result in those things. Uh, or rather, he hasn't been able to address my points on how they would result in the opposite, the, plur the proliferation of violence, the uh, increase in the amount of time that violence would be going on. Uh, these are things that, at the end of the day, weren't considered in the decision to intervene in Syria. What was considered, and what we should be thinking about more, is the ulterior motives, which is that to the US, to Russia, this is certainly justified for their gain, certainly justified on an international stage to give them power, but is it justified in the sense of helping the Syrian people? Would giving them more violence, more uh, ability to kill more civilians, uh, would any of that actually help them? How would this actually solve the issue they have of an authoritarian, of an authoritarian state, uh, uh, of this uh, seemingly poor uh, economic system, which, by the way, as described, mimics our own economic system? Uh, the idea here that we really need to focus on in terms of justification is, was this decision, when they were making it, considering this main, stakeho main stakeholder here, which is the Syrian people, what would best benefit them? It's really important, therefore, to accept the nuances of the situation, to accept that there was an international conflict in the people intervening in Syria, uh, that there was uh, uh, other uh, motives going on, that there was a power struggle there, not just of the Syrian people and individuals, but a wider power str uh, struggle between the US and Russia and everybody else involved in bolstering the forces within Syria. This power struggle arguably as we've seen, did not benefit them, but rather what we need to argue is that they knew there was the bright, there was a, a large possibility that it would make the situation worse. For reasons already uh, discussed, the vulnerabilities of the social and economic system in Syria at the time, the vulnerabilities on the international stage with their neighbors, and the future vulnerabilities that they have towards the situation. Uh, that being that potential consequence wise for this decision as mentioned in my opening statement Syria would be at the bottom of the pile here they would be most negatively situ situated after this intervention if it went wrong uh, and unfortunately that is the consequence that we've seen we know from articles at the time that people in Syria and people in the governments uh, considering the situation were aware uh, and therefore when we talk about justifications it's clear that it was not justified when thinking about the Syrian people. Do you right. yield your time? Mm, yes, I think. All right. Okay. Thank you guys very much. I greatly appreciate it. That was a very well thought debate from the both of you. Um, if you guys would like, we need to take a few minutes to reconvene and decide on our votes. From there, We'll come back here and then we can talk about it. Feel free to speak amongst yourselves. Okay. And we will be back shortly. All right. Well, as long as I've got all your attention, let's talk about the... Hello. Okay, based. Um, bring your uh, bring your dude to that stream. Uh, he's mm -hmm. not, or I guess the stream went down. It's fine. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, I am streaming. Okay, just in case. All right. Okay. So, um, first of all, I that was amazing, bro. That was a really nice debate. Um, it was a very good debate. Yeah, I'm happy with it. I'm happy with it. What do you guys think? Uh, I want to hear Elm first. Yeah. Elm. I was muted. Okay, so I think Goose totally controlled the debate. Uh, they used their time uh, way better. Um, and their final points, you know, they weren't adding more responses. I put all my notes in the chat. Uh, I don't understand the tangent about Chinese influence in America. That was never, like, talked about again, which is fine. Uh, it, was a, it was a strange tangent. Um, I, I think both debaters did well. I just think Goose <laughs> controlled the debate like almost in its entirety. <laughs> even though uh even though Wizard did have I think like uh potentially what, eight more minutes of speaking time, but they they didn't use it. Yeah. 
uh, I mean both of them didn't use much time but wizard uh, like uh, it's it's not an issue I feel like it's like hey if I'm concise with my points I can I just feel like he since he mentioned like multiple like he 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 shoot so many points he should have used that time to like further on right um but uh, yeah uh, I I don't blame him if he if he didn't though yeah I mean go ahead Monty would you like to go next um I do want to hear you first though cuz I I have like three things that I will, I want to finish recopulating my paper right. mm -hmm. so the if we were going only off of speaks goose wins like 10-0 no question ask um goose did pull a bit of an abusive tactic by trying to assume to assume ground particularly pertaining to Russia and stating that Russia's international action is equivocable to all international action and tried to use that as a dissad. That yes. is extremely abusive on the neg side. Yes. Traditionally, you get voted down for that kind of thing. The problem is, is that wizard doesn't have the experience to call that out for a neg afcra or for a neg ground grab. Mm -hmm. um, when it came to the actual points themselves, there was decent clash. Wizard made a lot of points, but didn't substantiate enough of them, particularly pertaining to his point on Hezbollah and, uh, and Al-Qaeda, on how a free and democratic Syria would technically be a check on them. That yes. could have been a very good point. And he just kind of left that hanging in the wind. Um, Wizard's strongest point was saying that there was, like, and Goose doesn't really have an answer to it because it's very hard not to, we're stating that you know there's violence regardless what happens whether it be the Assadi or whether it be Assad's government or otherwise so just saying fuck it leave the status quo because status quo is Syrian problems for Syria yeah doesn't it doesn't really stick the problem is is that wizard left so much on the table and didn't fully like express out his points into saying like for instance oh this is how we help out the Syrian people this is how this or this is how the intervention takes down like the disads that the neg are bringing up he did yeah. none of that yeah uh, so he presented a whole lot of points and not enough substance to really make an argument for it i think that is probably the biggest fulcrum that i give goose other than that i probably would have given the debate to wizard otherwise mm -hmm. but goose literally hit that hammer from the uh, from the first minute and just kept hammering it and wizard didn't have a response he had yeah. to sit there and hold that okay uh, amazing. Uh, I feel like uh, I do share both of your sentiments, um, especially when it comes. I feel like first, first of all, like the debate was good. They debated very nicely, but uh, the issue that I found out um, uh, with uh, who's uh, wizard is that not only like he mentioned stuff without further on like, like the Al Qaeda and the other ones. Uh, also, he mentioned uh, some stuff that he could have. Uh, He's basically giving, um, uh, like, what do you call it, gifting Goose uh, some arguments. Uh, I, he mentioned, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, the, the Russian, I mean, yes, he is the affirmative, and yes, he is able to, like, and yes, uh, Goose did commit the abusive thing that I agree with, uh, but there was, like, the argument where, uh, uh, where it was about the Russian intervention, where he was basically... Uh, uh, w one second, I have it in my points, uh, where he basically, what do you call it? Um, rather than using the Russia as, uh, like, as w what, like calling out Goose's argument as, hey, uh, Russia is not just another world intervention. Uh, R Russia uh, is countering that world intervention, right? By supporting Al-Assad. So like this thing that they, they could have done, which ca can like put him in a huge dis uh, advantage. I didn't like how he um, added at the end um, another point where I think because of the, his in inexperience on doing these things, um, that's why he added like a, a point in his conclusion about the refugee crisis. I feel like that just doesn't help him. Um, in general, uh, uh, debate wise, I feel like it was like very equal. But uh, I feel like these kind of small mistakes just uh, swayed the, the, my, my, uh, my uh, well, vote to, uh, towards, uh, yeah, Goose. Uh -huh. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sorry, let's head back. Um, here's what we'll do. Um, we'll announce the winner, and then we'll each give our voting criteria to the debaters. That sound good? Based. Right, perfect. 
All right, head back to the politics room. Let's go. Dude, what do you mean everyone looks better as a woman? Mm. One second. That's not true. Dude, women. Okay. One second, guys. Hello. Nice. That, no, that's me. That's not Seth. Mm -hmm. Just a second. Hello. One second. <laughs> Damn, damn bros, okay, damn, okay, damn, oh, I'm just gonna say damn, okay, damn, uh, also invite Elm, okay, just in case, okay, mm -hmm. thank you, Abby. How, how are you, Spectar, by the way, I'm tired, I'm damn. very tired, <laughs> damn, bro, oh, yeah. Jesus, uh, who's the other, can we yeah. get the uh, last guy, Elm, yes, Elm, Elm where Dave. are they, yes, uh, Zar, if you can see them, I don't recognize their icon really. Uh, hey, sorry, there we go, I've seen them. Yeah, right click their name and then do invite to speak. It's not giving me the ability to. You should. They're right next to MJ, the KO, and right above Apache. Mm -hmm. It's not giving me the ability to, like, scroll around with it. Am I dumb? Oh, I got it, I got it. I can do it from oh, chat. It. I can do it from chat. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> Alright. Nice. Alright, there we go, there we go. There we go. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. Thank you for sticking with us through the short intermission. But we've come back with our delineation. And in a vote of three to zero, the winner of tonight's debate is Goose. Woo! Congratulations. Woo! <laughs> We'll, we'll be going into our congratulations. Voting, we will be going into our voting criteria, explaining why we voted the way we voted, and giving constructive criticism to all parties involved. Yes. So, um, I'll this start is, first. This is a ploy to get me banned. Yes. No. Uh, I mean, no. <laughs> oh no. Absolutely. I I got no, so I got got to give to give our voting criteria quickly and expediently. Uh, to be quite frank, Wizard, you started out very strong. You had a lot of good points that you mentioned, particularly mentioning Iraq and Hezbollah. And you brought up a lot of very interesting like avenues that you could have taken to attack, but you didn't really substantiate most of them. You didn't really close the knot, per se. And you left a lot of like things hanging in the wind. Without that, you couldn't really answer the big question that Groose is bringing up particularly pertaining to the idea of how does this help the Syrian people? How does this better, or like, how is this inherently better than the SQ or the status quo? Well, wow. yes, the idea, like the moral argument that you presented saying that the, or that, you know, Assad killing people and people dying is not inherently equivocal, which is true. And I, get, I definitely voted you up on that. The fact of the matter is you left a lot open and it wasn't, there was that, and a few instances of making arguments in a or making arguments in your closing statement that kind of tipped the scales. Other than that, you did very well. And I definitely just think it was more of a matter of experience at that point. As for Goose, uh, you did very well. You held the or you controlled the debate for a large portion of it. Um, I will say your opening argument as a means of equating Russian interventionalism to all interventionalism and by proxy making it a or by trying to pretty much pull the rug out from underneath the AF and taking their uh one the agency of enforcement and implying that all agencies are the same is a bit abusive um in probably higher level like rounds many other debaters might will have called you out on it and given you a lot of shit for it rightfully so um however given the the ranks that we like the internet doesn't necessarily teach parliamentary debate tactics, you were allowed to escape by with it. 
Um, aside from that, your biggest claim to fame in this debate was one, your speaking tact, you were very good, um, and your ability to kind of poke the big hole in this situation by stating that the act didn't necessarily present how exactly intervention necessarily helped. It didn't give like a clear delineation of saying, how does A lead to free Syrian democracy and help? Valid. Because he presented <laughs> no, all of the endpoints, but so nothing in the middle. <laughs> I would say that was probably your best point. <laughs> um, everything else, you know, was kind of limp -wristed. I'm not going to say it was great, but you did well enough that you could kind of stave him off and you fought him on every point that he tried to make. And in the end, I think that's kind of what gave you the edge and the nod for my vote. Valencia, uh, I'd like to hear yes. your point next. Based. Okay, so for me, I share a lot of what Cesar said. Uh, I feel like a, uh, a wizard, um, Goose has laid out uh, the idea that uh, Russian intervention is like any other. I think what you should have done there, like specifically, is basically say, hold on, this is not like the world intervention. This is like counter the world intervention, right? Because they are supposed to. You're breaking us. up a lot. Uh, I'm sorry, just one second. Let me fix that. It's all good. It's just a connection thing. Uh... Robotic. Okay, yeah, this is basically, yeah, uh, see, uh, okay, so um, I was saying that uh, your, uh, uh, both of you did amazing, by the way, both of you did good, uh, uh, however, what I was saying, basically, like, what, basically, two things, basically, that swayed me to choose Goose over a wizard is uh, the first one being uh, um, uh, the fact that uh, the Russian intervention uh, was mentioned uh, by Goose as like world intervention, where it uh, it is basically counter the world intervention, and this is like something that you could have easily just like uh, answered. And uh, 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 Goose, I feel like did that good uh, good uh, argument, and that's uh, like it, it's not that good argument. I mean, but it's like something that you could have easily just like uh, uh, rebutted. Um, the other thing was, uh, which is something that I don't like, um, uh, the idea that you added at the end more uh, points in conclusion. Uh, I feel like this also comes from an experience with uh, debate tournaments. Conclusions are not to add points. Um, conclusions are to conclude your own original points, right? And to convince the judges with what have already been said. You've added the refugee crisis point, which was not mentioned. Uh, I confirmed with the other judges if it was mentioned that I've missed it, but it didn't. So that that's something that we can work on uh, uh, for like future uh, debates, right? Uh, yeah, uh, I feel like other than that, uh, I am not as experienced as Cesar in judging. Like I am kind of new to this, so I feel like both of you did good. Uh, both of you did great. So yeah, good job. Yeah, so both of my judges have already said everything that matters, so I'm just going to pull things out of my ass, okay? So first <laughs> off, Goose, you completely controlled the flow of this conversation. Ever since you, your first rebuttal, you had the field. Uh, you used a large amount of your time, if not all of it, uh, very effectively, and your oratory skills were impeccable. Uh, Wizard, you did very good. This was a very, very good debate. Very enjoyable, and I'm happy. And I'm just going to let us leave, because that's all that needs to be said. Good job, everybody. I'm going to post the notes in the chat. Peace. All right. Thank you guys for coming out tonight. It was a great round with all or from everyone involved. Um, we'd be moving to round two, but unfortunately, due to scheduling issues and a bit of a um, I guess the best way to call it is a uh, an issue of attendance. Savitar will not be joining us for this round today and has forfeited the round.